you can close the presentation unless i mean anyone has any questions on dr sanchita's slides do you want to go back on her slides and review anything as part of the questioning uh, if he can keep it he will be speaking so uh thank you dr prithviraj interesting yes, case uh, so what was the feed that was given to the baby at the time of deterioration uh, sir we were giving og feeds only sir we removed that OG and then we put so our OG uh, tube was not high or anything. Was there an X ray confirmation? Uh, uh, X ray we didn't do, sir. Actually. How do you confirm the OG? Uh, just position? by auscultation only, sir. So here you don't use the filter paper to confirm the tube position as well, no? So that's a problem as well. I mean, the auscultation method is not ideal because if it's a little high tube by the risk of aspiration, most of these acute events, I mean, you are absolutely right in the scheme of things, but mm -hmm. the most common reason for a baby who was relatively stable, because this was a stable baby, yes, sir. who suddenly worsens is a reflex or a aspiration related. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, that can happen in a baby on tube feeds as well, because a reflex can happen anytime. Mm -hmm. It's a like a reflex during spasm, you lose the FRC and then you need it to resuscitate. So Dr. Rakesh was mentioning the LMA yesterday. Yes, sir. Uh, so this kind of situation, if you felt the mass ventilation wasn't effective mm -hmm. or the baby was taking longer, you can use LMA instead of intubating the baby because you okay. immediately extubated the baby as well. Yes, sir. Did you extubate intentionally or was it a stupid? Uh, so, uh, baby was having a spontaneous breathing, sir. So I gradually. Yes. So you that. decided, like in mm -hmm. the resuscitation scenario, sometimes with the poor effort, we intubate because of the medication in the mother and you're extubating immediately. So mm -hmm. this scenario, it's acceptable, but instead of intubating which is more invasive if you feel uh, this is the scenario we were discussing yesterday if you have the eye gel or the lma where you don't know whether you because you, you so uh what was he saying the uh, lma if you have the option available you can yeah, start using it and this is the exact scenario where the studies we discussed in uh, us and uh, dr Karthik was saying he published with dr satyan so this is the scenario where we are discussing that you can use that okay so uh, this is one and the other point is obviously you did septic screen and mm -hmm. apnea of prematurity you rightly said that it's less likely to present so acutely apnea mm -hmm. of prematurity usually you see desaturation mm -hmm. yes, of course if you don't uh, attend immediately to the desaturation baby can i mean mm -hmm. uh, worsen mm -hmm. but usually the desaturation stimulation picking up that kind of picture is more with apnea of prematurity and sudden collapse, IVH and all are less likely in this baby. But you did a brain scan as well? Uh, no, sir. We just did uh, echo. We sent to another hospital. We what is your echo. policy for brain ultrasound? Which group of babies? Sir, uh, if it is a preterm, uh, less than 32 weeks, uh, we, were, we were doing, sir. After one week, if baby is stable, uh, we will send to nearby. You can send this baby like similar babies. If it's mm. you know, baby improved and you're not thinking of acute intervention, mm. you can do it as an outpatient also. 1.5 kilo at birth mm. and a small baby as well. So you can do an ultrasound, mm. but not related to this event. This okay. event is most likely a feeding tube. And look at the feeding tube position and fixation. Mm. We, uh, I don't think we are covering that specifically in the uh, supportive care uh, videos that we are presenting, but Discuss that with your nursing team. It's very important that the securing of the feeding tube, checking the position at every shift because a high feeding tube is a big risk of aspiration. You may find a baby on CPAP who is worsening. Mm. Clinical course doesn't suggest any reason for the baby to worsen. That could easily be because of the feeding tube uh, not being in the right place. Okay. So, uh, Dr. Sanchita, I mean, that was a nice presentation again. So, in terms of uh, the rotation policy, most units have started using that. So, uh, the mask and the prong and obviously uh, the ventilator companies themselves come out with the interfaces so you can have that as a backup because each baby is different yes in some babies the fissure fecal may be tight or uh, sometimes it sits near the crust mm. so uh, if the nasal ally is injured you can try changing to a different brand and obviously the rotation is aimed at uh, changing and the appropriate size of the mask mm. as well if you have two different types for example if one doesn't fit the same yes. uh, size relevant you can try so ram cannula have you uh, used it for high flow because dr ramnathan he says he doesn't have high flow in his unit i mean he designed it for napv but you are right about the fda approval i mean because they have not approved it for the non-invasive ventilation but that's what most of us use it for so if you have not used it and you have a reason i mean because the uh, the interfaces that we discussed the routine ones they need the hat and sometimes the pressure, the nursing support is very important, how they are fixing it. 
if there is a significant pull on it to avoid the sometimes they put it too tight and that's one of the reasons you get the septal injury and the ram cannula eliminates that of course if it sits too close to the tip you can have ulceration in this part so again nothing is absolutely safe and very good nursing care use of skin protective can you describe what skin protection you use uh, sir actually tigaderm we would use uh, i was not aware of this but i re read recently of the cannulade uh, the duoderm kind of duoderm yes. yes sir that they would use which has uh, the nasal you opening you can strip it cut it and keep it ready uh, yes, most sir. of the nurses uh, they would support it a lot i mean skin protection is one of the most important aspects and it's developing as well so uh, all of you look into that part uh, humidification of course i mean nasal interface the main thing is also what we discussed yesterday about suction that the nasal patency is very important yes. and any irritation will increase your secretions so try to avoid and keep the baby comfortable uh, any questions for either of them please no from here we can share the mic if anyone needs my mic Okay. I have one comment. Yes. So, Sanjita, it's a very great presentation. So, good thing you didn't mention the endotracheal tube, which sometimes people cut and use it as a single prong. Uh, this thing because many units they do that. They cut it, calculate the distance between the tip of the nose and the tragus, and push it into the nostril. That's the highest form of resistance. And uh, there is data available in each of these uh, interfaces. What is the amount of resistance? which is generated. The maximum resistance is with that kind of thing. The least is with one of these bioral, uh, you know, prongs. Oh, sorry, That's sorry. very good. It's very well represented. Still a curiosity, what could have happened to that child? I was not sure. You had been, uh, after you deep prong, after you extubated, mm. yes. you gave uh, off the oxygen. You were giving feeds uh, by parlada, this thing, or by puke. When, sir, on that day, or, that day uh, when you stopped the oxygen, uh, uh, we were giving uh, OG only, sir. OG feeds only. OG feeds That's only. We were giving. We feet just feet removed feet. that uh, OG tube uh, mm. after one hour. Uh, the tube position, the securing, and uh, checking also. You also have don't have pH paper for your no. The cost don't. as well. Like, mm. It's expensive. Sugar. Which one? Uh, we checked, sir. It was normal only. Mm. Sir, can we use that? House? Ventilator CPAP for uh, NIV uh, through. Uh, uh, so, can we use that ventilator wala CPAP through RAM cannula? Is this effective? The pressure uh, we discussed has to be higher. You can... uh, we have to keep the peep higher than the usual if you're keeping six on 30%. the. Yes, 30%. So we can keep the higher peep because the nasal prongs are not used for a fit. shorter period or can we can use a it, we can replace it with a bubble CPAP. Yeah. But, I mean, remember that the ventilator is an expensive device and you may have limitation. So bubble CPAP is cheaper. So if your baby needs CPAP, you can use a bubble CPAP. And I think some people are using even bubble CPAP with the RAM cannula, isn't it? You can adapt the interface. Yeah, so yeah. you can use a RAM cannula as one of the interfaces. So as she mentioned, so whether it's ventilator or bubble CPAP or even high flow, so you can use the same cannula. But uh, remember, the OptiFlow is not designed for NAPPV. Some people use it. We have used it in occasional babies where the RAM cannula isn't tolerated or the appropriate size wasn't available. Again, you have to increase the pressure, but how, by how much or it's not well studied. And the resistance, because the tube is not uh, narrowing specifically, we can't predict. So not ideal. And RAM cannula used for high flow also not ideal. but because OptiFlow is designed for that and the narrowing may affect the gas flow. In RAM cannula, the leak is 30%. In high flow, the leak should be 50%. So the size may not be as ideal. So again, it's debatable. But uh, as Dr. Karthi clearly pointed out, don't assume, he gave an anecdote, don't assume that anything that you modify will work appropriately. So you have to be always watchful and don't change unless you really need to change. If there is a particular reason, like we said, the right size RAM cannula wasn't available, we tried it. Or if the injury is very particular and this cannula may reduce the risk of exposure, you can try that. But don't change for the sake of changing it. See, the, just to clarify once more, uh, in the evidence-based literature, RAM cannula has been tried as a CPAP modality. Has it been seen and some yeah. RCTs are there? Yeah, I mean, NAPPV that Professor Ramanathan studied, all the studies are with RAM cannula. Mm. And uh, his experience is based on that. So both CPAP and NAPPV, not high flow. So generally, we are catering a very poor uh, patients. What we are doing, we the, uh, cut that nasal cannula uh, and put it, uh, attach it with the ET tube connector. 
इट इज कनेक्टेड टू द वेंटिलेटर इट इट इज कनेक्टेड टू द वेंटिलेटर मतलब इट इज अप ऑफ रैम स्कैनला Okay. Actually, Ram Canal is very inexpensive in India right now. Why don't you get that? Ah, uh, how much is it? Sir, Wait, actually, uh, we are catering a patients. Uh, even they they don't have money. Ah, uh, to, to give um uh, an ICU bed charges only. So can that be reused? I mean, this is so of we course reusing. we are you're reusing. You're reusing yes. it. Hmm. The nasal cannula you're reusing. No, no, Ram Canola. See, Ram Canola. The advantage is the material is very sturdy. I mean, it's fairly uh, sturdy, and it can probably be reused after sterilization again. The company Multiple. would not recommend that, but uh, mm, you can probably. So, I would rather suggest if some donor is there, get some ten Ram Canola donated. I'm just giving an example, yes, yes. and keep reusing it. That would be a better option. So, okay. Thank you. So, I think yes. Ram scanula also with a cannulate which I read recently that is a dual dome with Sir Sir was mentioning that has an additional advantage of eliminating the pressure points as well as it can be somewhat more snugly fit for providing the CPAP. So that has been studied more than just the Ram cannula itself. It will be too snugly fit. Yes. So remember thirty percent. No, even for CPAP you need thirty percent leak around Ram cannula for the expiration to happen. So don't do uh, tightness for the Ram cannula. You need the gas to go around. Uh, keeping it too tight for ram cannula is not recommended also this is from dr ramnathan himself so again uh, be careful with how you fix it be careful with the feeding tube position feeding intervals we discussed already i mean the 3 hourly and 2 hourly feeds some of you may be using 3 hourly for sake of nursing convenience but the volume is one third more so we all know that the gas is going through the tummy and the bubbling is happening so the reflex will be there whether we uh, have studies to prove it or not physiologically you are seeing reflex so keeping it a little less by giving two hourly feeds is better the head and elevation there is no harm not only in the extreme premature to prevent ivh but even in these babies to reduce the chance of reflux none of these will prevent reflux there will still be occasional aspiration episodes so be alert mm. to such cases and in your case most probably the feeding tube could have been high or the baby uh, reflexed and aspirated even with handling during kmc also make sure you tell the mothers not to press on the tummy the position of the baby is important and if they have been fed the pressure on the tummy can cause reflex as well so i think we will move on